Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for i5 for the iPhone is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This episode of i5 for the iPhone is brought to you by Harry's. For guys and gals who want a great shave experience for a fraction of what you're paying now, go to Harry's dot com. Get five dollars off your first purchase by entering the code i5 when you check out. everybody, welcome to i5 for the iPhone episode 97. We can finally call ourselves the old 97s. And if you're over 35 or so, you probably get that. This is the joke, the show rather, that covers the latest iPhone news, apps, tips, and tricks. I'm Sarah Lane, your spirit animal to all things iOS. Let us embark. Number one. Okay, let me ask you a question. Do we all need another photo app? Nope, we definitely don't. But the folks over at Tap 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 are giving us one anyway. Now, if the name Tap 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 doesn't ring a bell, they're the ones behind Camera Plus, which pretty much put photo editing apps on the map, at least in this Instagram age that we're in right now. In fact, Tap 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 claims that Camera Plus is the best selling app of all time. Now, if that's true, that's incredible. And they've got a brand new app called Magic Cam, which is a much more simplified version of an app designed to clean up your photos. You just snap a photo within the app and Magic Cam will work its magic. It's not even really up to you. It's kind of seems like a combination of high contrast and a little HDR, and then you're done. No brightness sliders, no shadow boosters, no nothing. Now, it isn't completely filter free. Magic Cam has nine preset filters they call moods if you want an extra layer over your magic photo. But that whole part of it does seem de emphasized. Also, no photo importing. You either take the photo in Magic Cam or you're on your own, which is a bold move because it really means that you have to replace your camera app with Magic Cam. But they're obviously confident that people who like minimum tinkering will like Magic Cam the best. So clearly, I have some photo editing app hoarding issues, but I know a lot of you just don't really get the same rush from running your photos through several apps in order to achieve some perfect photo. So for 99 cents, Magic Cam is your new easy, easy camera app. Number two, let's check in on the iPhone rumor mill, which is really only going to heat up over the next few months as we continue to get closer to the time of year that Apple releases new hardware, and in the iPhone's case, that has always been September, for the last few years anyway. Bloomberg is reporting that suppliers in China are starting mass production of new larger iPhones next month. They're citing anonymous sources who, you know, are familiar with the matter. So not just one larger model, mind you, but two, a 4.7 inch display, that's bigger than the current four inch screen of the current iPhone 5S, but also a 5.5 inch version, which is huge, that may be ready for the public around the same time. Two models, both bigger. Now it's important to remember that supply chain rumors don't mean that Apple's plans are set in stone. The company could be making batches of a big iPhone that never sees the light of day. They just wanna see what it looks like. And Bloomberg definitely isn't the first news org to speculate that we're getting bigger phones at some point in the near future. But it does lend some credit to the thinking that Apple wants to compete with companies like Samsung, like HTC, that have had really quite a lot of success with larger screens. A lot of customers love them, a lot of my friends love them. In fact, Bloomberg points out that in China, which is a really important market for Apple going forward, 40% of mobile gadgets running Android sold in 2014, at least so far, had display sizes of more than five inches. That's according to an estimate from Forrester Research. Now, it doesn't mean that Apple can't gain market share here, but it might be hard to go down in size for a lot of those consumers who are just used to bigger phones. The iPhone generates more than half of Apple's annual revenue. In 2013, it produced $91 billion in revenue. So this next chapter is really important, and I can't wait. Number three, how much do you love your job? Now, I hope the answer is, as much as humanly possible, I have the best job ever. It's kind of how I feel about my job, sorry. But I know that's not how everybody feels. Okay, so if you want a new job, where do you go? You go to the classified section of your newspaper. Ha <laughs> ha, just kidding. You probably go to LinkedIn, right? Well, maybe. 
but LinkedIn feels more like a build a resume here, connect with people here, vouch for various skills that other people have here, and less of a, I just want a new job. Well, LinkedIn has a new app separate from its existing app called LinkedIn Job Search, and it does exactly what it sounds like. You search for jobs via job titles or keywords, and within a particular location, either where you are at this moment or somewhere else. If you see something you like, you can apply for that job with your LinkedIn profile and all of your information in your profile right from the app. Now LinkedIn says, and I just am gonna believe them because why not, that this is totally private because nobody in your LinkedIn network will ever know or see that you've looked at a particular job or ever applied for one through the app. Now, depending on how much you want to be on top of it, you can turn on notifications for when a job that's matching your criteria shows up, or just search every so often. But I think it's always good to know what else is out there. Even if you don't change jobs, knowledge is power. Salary negotiating power. This episode of iFi for the iPhone is brought to you by Harry's. Yeah, it's a new advertiser. They're a new innovative company that's disrupting an industry that we've all had to, I don't know, endure, and that's razors. Now, for a long time, this is not the kind of experience that you had <laughs> when you bought a razor. You gotta go to you know, the, the, the drugstore, the razors are overpriced, they're behind some like plastic, sometimes you gotta, they're locked because people steal them. They're so expensive that then you can like spend all this time waiting for a clerk to unlock the razors. It just doesn't make any sense. This, these are not precious stones. The alternative is for any of us who like to shave parts of our body to go with a cheap razor, and you know how that turns out. It doesn't work either. So now, Harry's is giving us, for the first time, a great shave at a fair price. Harry's was founded less than two years ago by Andy and Jeff, and they knew there was a better way to sell people razors that didn't suck. They, they focus on giving you a great shaving experience for a fraction of the price of other razor blades. You know, Gillette's, those big names. They have a nice clean product design. It's that less but better. High quality blades engineered at their own factory in Germany. They're sharp, they're strong, and it's convenient because you're ordering online and you never have to go to that razor aisle ever again. In fact, Jeff, one of the co-founders, also co-founded Warby Parker. That's been a sponsor here on i5. A lot of similarities in the Razor model. Great design, craftsmanship, very good value, and then dedicated customer service. Go to harrys.com, that's H-A-R-R-Y-S.com, and use the promo code i5 and get $5 off your first purchase. That's harrys.com, promo code i5, and thanks to Harry's for their support of i5 for the iPhone and a very clean shave. Number four, we got a voicemail. Yeah, we still get voicemail from Evan. It was a little tip for those of us who can't always have our eyes on our little screens reading our emails because we're very busy people. Hello, this is Evan in New Jersey calling. I have a uh, little tip that I'm, I don't remember you ever covering. And basically it's in the accessibility option. You can go to the voiceover and choose to select text, and then the text will read aloud to you. And basically, um, what I found this to be uh, helpful was if I had an email, maybe I'm about to go home uh, for the day, and I see I get an email that's really important, I send it to my phone, and then as I'm driving, I decide before I drive, I highlight all the text, and I say speech, and now in the car, I can hear everything. We believe that everyone has a grain of creativity in them. And you can choose different accents. You can change the speed in which it reads. Hi, Sarah. I wanted to drop you a note that today we've released an update to. So uh, it's very good. And it's very clever, and I just wanted to pass that on, and I hope it helps somebody out there. Thank you very much. Love the show. I'm curious to know which accent you chose, Evan. Probably American. But yeah, I've never been too crazy about the robot voice. But it is better than nothing, and certainly in a pinch, when you need to know what a bunch of text says in an email or elsewhere, and you have to be looking somewhere else. Maybe you're driving or whatever. This is definitely one way to do it. Thanks for the call, Evan. Finally, number five. I tried, I really tried to get through an entire show without mentioning a new app that helps you message your friends. I swear I did, but Path wasn't having any of it because the company has released a standalone messaging app called Path Talk, which is separate from its 
150 of your closest friends social app. Path Talk is all about the private conversation side, either one-on-one -on -one or group conversations, but outside of Path Social, hey everybody look at my new baby or cat or beautiful beer updates where everybody can comment or add a smiley face or whatever. Here's some interesting behavior in Path Talk though that I think is pretty cool. A feature called Off the Record means that messages that you send in Path Talk are automatically erased from Path servers 24 hours after you send them, regardless of whether or not they've been seen. So they live for one day, period. Ambient status is cool too. It can automatically tell your friends when you're in transit or in their neighborhood, or even low on battery. So if you don't respond right away, say your friend won't freak out because clearly, oh yeah, Sarah's in her car, or ooh, Sarah needs a charger, or oh, Sarah's at the office because that's right next to where I am. Good use of the phone's internal accelerometer to help passively share status here. I haven't seen that before, very clever. A few other features like quick replies let you quickly, you know, kind of acknowledge somebody's message without having to respond right away. And of course, it wouldn't be path without stickers. And then the app includes voice messaging too. Hey, just wanted to say yo but then realize there's already another app that does that. The company says, curiously enough, that soon you'll also be able to message restaurants and stores with place messaging. So book reservations or look up a price or check store availability all through text messaging in Path Talk. That part is a little off the rails to me and so I'll have to see it in action to know if it feels out of place in a friend messaging app. But I have to give props to this company for thinking outside the box. Path Talk is, it's really nice. Here's the problem. How do I get everybody to use it? That's always the problem. What do I, uh, hold guns to their heads? I, I'm, I don't know, I'm, I'm actually asking. How do you get your friends to switch apps? It's really challenging. By the way, Path Talk is free with some in-app purchases for stickers and stuff. And that does it for this episode of i5. I had a lot of fun, hope you did too. All of the apps and links and other information from the show is all at twit.tv slash i5. You can email ideas, questions, or general feedback to i5 at twit.tv. Leave us a voicemail like Evan did at 614 on i5, or send us a video with an app review of your own. I'm Sarah Lane and we'll see you next time on i5 for the iPhone. Yay!